Uh, joining us from London to take a look at the soft commodities in Middle East Africa is Edward George, Head of Soft Commodities Research at Echo Bank. Edward, thank you for your time. I think before we get uh, straight into things, let's talk about the trends that we've been seeing when it comes to soft commodities. Are we seeing a divergence of sorts or is it pretty much along the same path? Well, I think we're seeing a lot of strength in soft commodity prices this year. Last year was quite a disappointment. And in fact, there were a number of uh, companies and traders who lost quite a bit of money on uh, commodities like sugar. This year, there's been strength across the commodities, particularly in coffee. If you look at Arabica, it's almost 80% up on the year. And that's really because of what's going on in Brazil. Uh, with the drought in Brazil, we've also seen sugar prices affected. And then, of course, we have concerns, concerns over wheat, uh, not just the U.S. crop, but also Ukraine, which is one of the major exporters where there are fears of disruption. So certainly we're seeing quite a lot of strength across the board and uh, generally a good outlook for soft commodities. I mean, uh, just be, I, would, I, would, I would think that there's definitely a lot of opportunity to be had here. Uh, there should possibly be some gambling that's going on if you look at the, what traders are, current, are currently doing. Are you able to perhaps maybe shed some light as to how we're seeing uh, traders taking advantage of this? Well, certainly we can see it in the cocoa uh, prices because uh, internationally cocoa prices have risen quite strongly during the season, even though the crop has been very good. Um, West Africa is on track for a record crop this season in Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana. And usually when you have an excess of production, you would expect prices to fall. But if anything, they've been going up. And even though they have wobbled a little in the last few weeks, it's clear that traders are betting on the fact that in the future there will be a lot more demand and that there won't be enough cocoa. So even though we have rising production, paradoxically, we also have strong prices. And of course, we have two major risks hanging over uh, cocoa supplies for the second half of the year. The first thing is the likelihood of bean hoarding as intermediaries hold on to beans in expectation that fixed prices will go up at the start of the new season in October. And of course, there's El Nino, the weather phenomenon which could bring dry weather to West Africa, which could mean a drop in uh, cocoa production in West Africa and higher prices. Edward, is there anything that can be done? I mean, you're mentioning factors there that seem to be out of our control. Climate change is, is something that we can do nothing about. Um, how does one position themselves if they are directly exposed to soft commodities? Well, I think it all depends on the soft commodity and the region of the world. Um, most of the f attention of the world is focused on Southeast Asia because it's likely that there will be drier weather there. We should actually see a drop in the production of key soft commodities, rice, palm oil in Southeast Asia. There's also concerns about the impact on Latin America and America. But of course, if you're focusing on the African commodity space, there's three different stories. Potentially dry weather in West Africa affecting output of um, co uh, cocoa, uh, potentially uh, uh, wetter weather in East Africa, which could affect crops like tea and coffee, both negatively and, posi and uh, positively. And then in Southern Africa, uh, an impact on the maize belt, South Africa, uh, Zimbabwe, Zambia. This could exacerbate maize shortages and lead to a bit of a food crisis. So it all depends what space you're playing in, both in terms of the commodity and geographically. Let's shift our focus now to take a look at sugar specifically. Uh, if we look at the Kenyan space and what they're doing, they're moving towards privatization. Uh, how far are they with that? Because there have been a lot of, uh, of factors that have been uh, plaguing the Kenyan sugar industry. I um, mean, Edward, can you perhaps maybe shed some light on that? Well, I think Kenya is running out of time to reform its sugar sector. It's already had 10 years worth of extensions to uh, Comesa safeguards, which basically protect Kenya from cheap imports from its more efficient neighbors. But the biggest problem for Kenya is the high cost of production. The average cost to produce sugar is $570 a ton in Kenya. That's more than double the average for Zimbabwe or Zambia, uh, Swaziland, Sudan. All of these countries are poised to unleash a deluge of cheap imports of sugar into Kenya uh, next year. So the government is scrambling to reform the sector. It's trying to privatize five um, private mills, which are effective, uh, uh, five state-owned mills, which are effectively bankrupt at the moment. But uh, there is really a lot to do to improve yields. And there will be some very difficult decisions which have to be made, which will be politically painful. And they are the most difficult ones to implement. Mm. Would you, would you just say it's just the case of competitiveness? Uh, is Africa or Kenya just not competitive enough. 
Well, I think it's also to do with uh, the realities of each individual sugar sector. We see, for example, that Sudan um, has the most efficient sugar production in the world. We also see um, uh, in West Africa huge differences between uh, the uh, yields of cocoa production at Saint uh, in uh, Cote d'Ivoire or in Ghana. So it very much depends on how the sector is managed um, and whether you can get inputs to the farmers when they need them. But the thing we should always bear in mind is Africa's agricultural sector is very fragmented. Um, the average size of a, of, a, of a cultivated land in Africa is just one to two hectares, and there are millions and millions of farmers. They don't have the same advantage that uh, agricultural sectors in the USA, Europe, or even Brazil have of aggregated production in a plantation, and that will make it always much more difficult to improve yields. Edward, what's the outlook like for soft commodities going forward? Well, I think it's very positive. There's no doubt about it that there is very strong demand in the world, uh, which is coming back. Demand from consumers for food and also for uh, consumer foods such as, you know, chocolate or tea or coffee. So the, certainly the medium to long term outlook is strong. Uh, and I think there's a lot of focus now on how yields can be uh, improved across the board so that the agricultural producers of Africa can meet this demand. But I think a key for Africa is also to develop African sources of demand. It's not enough that Africa constantly depends on the tastes of Americans for coffee or Europeans for chocolate to find a market for its soft commodities. It needs to develop African tastes, African culture, um, and products which fit the African style of consuming goods. Uh, there is a rapidly growing middle class. The potential is there. And that's really where the future of middle Africa's soft commodity sector lies.